ever feel like our circuit protection technology is a little out of date? I mean, we can make smart cameras that can tell me if it's a dog or a package on my front porch. We can put a semiconductor on a piece of silicon the size of a dime. But when it comes to circuit protection, we have fuses where we wait for the current to melt a chunk of metal inside a tube. Weird. Something went wrong there? (laughs) Then we have to actually find that little inline plastic fuse holder that someone else thoughtfully hid away where we would have to take apart half of our system to find. Oh, and then we have to find a replacement for that. What is it? I can't even read the current rating on that thing. Ugh. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. It's time to get rid of the fuse in most of our applications. My guest today is Jake Cannon from Toshiba, and we're going to talk about the e-fuse, which should get me away from all of this prehistoric fuse nonsense forever. It's about time. (laughs) And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about e-fuses from Toshiba. Hi, Jake. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity. So in our design, circuit protection is getting more and more important. And we're here to talk about e-fuses. So what exactly is an e-fuse? So an e-fuse is kind of a modern solution to a very archaic problem. used to have these physical devices to where you have an overcurrent, overvoltage situation, and it would blow the fuse, right? You have to go in and replace it, and that's not really elegant. It's very physical and very guttural. But eFuse comes in with a more elegant solution to where you're actually doing calculations on board, doing comparisons, and you have this internal IC that detects overcurrent, overvoltage, and tells the system to stop. Let me break it down for you a little bit. So the eFuse is a modern version of the traditional sacrificial fuse. You might have seen fuses appear as early as 1864. That's a long time ago. And I can say that some of that technology is still here today. And I don't think that's a good sign for an ever-growing electrical industry because everything is super complex now and you need very precise current control and the old fuses really don't provide that. And it's cool because the e-fuse provides four main areas of improvements and that's repeatability. A normal fuse blows, you have to replace it. That's the only thing you can do. The e-fuse streamlines that and allows you to actually reset it within the device. No replacements needed. So you've taken away the adventure of going down into a dark basement to try to find a fuse box. Right. No more horror stories. Nothing like that's happening anymore. And it's also smart. So the internal circuits determine the acceptable levels of overcurrent and voltage. And that's important because you're no longer relying on physical elements to determine your voltage conditions. It's accurate as well. So typically with a normal fuse, you have a high overhead. I mean, you could blow at 100 amps or 150. Obviously, our e-fuse is a bit lower in terms of current, but... The margins are much lower, so design is much more simple. And not only that, it's fast. And that's the most important thing. It's because you want these overcurrent conditions to end immediately. And that's what the e-fuse accomplishes. Got it. Okay. So how do e-fuses compare with other types of fuses I might be familiar with? Sure. So you're really going to see three types of other fuses. A conventional fuse. It's going to be a glass filament type fuse. A chip fuse, which is definitely a lot smaller and a filament film size. And then also polyfuse, which is a bit more complex, but still not on the level of Toshiba's E-Fuse IC. So in comparison to those two, a conventional fuse is not repeatable. It blows, it's done. Same with the chip fuse. Polyfuse is a little different, and it can repeat. But none of them actually have clamping current accuracy or clamping voltage accuracy, which is very important because that helps aid your design. Not only that, short circuit response is drastically improved in the Toshiba E-Fuse IC. Conventional fuse, for instance, might take a second to blow. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of damage can happen in a second. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a conventional fuse just reacts when there's so much current. It actually melts the metal. And that's important because that means that's one second of time that your circuit is actually seeing the full current surge. And that's really bad because if you have an IC like a PMIC, for instance, attached afterwards... It's going to see that for a second. So that's really bad for a very delicate circuit. And with the e-fuse, we try to limit that to only 150 nanoseconds, which is incredibly short. That's why it's such a great protection device. A chip fuse, five seconds, but a polyfuse is about 0.1 seconds. So at our 150 nanosecond range, that's very much better. It's awesome. So when the regular fuse, like the ones in my basement, blow, there's a lot of current that has nowhere to go, and that can cause a lot of bad things as well. So what happens with an e-fuse when it opens? So that's a great question. So normal fuse has two terminals, and when it blows, it's basically an open circuit. 
Whereas the E-fuse is actually an IC, so it has a ground plane. Got it. So if there's some inductance near where the E-fuse blows, there's somewhere for that freight train of current to go without causing problems? So what will happen is when the device goes into a thermal shutdown or into short circuit mode, the current and voltage will be pulled straight to ground instead of just not flowing at all. This is great because it actually allows you to control that entire facet of the E-fuse. So E-fuses are the first sophisticated solution for overcurrent protection. Conventional fuses and polyfuses operate by manipulating physical principles and reacting accordingly. So that means that if the filament blows, operation is ceased, if the current conditions are met, the resistance goes up. So it's very physical. Toshiba's E-fuse is much more elegant. It actively monitors current and voltage and makes decisions based on the present conditions. Got it. Okay. And fast response is important to me because I can see how a lot of circuit damage could happen during that one second it takes for a conventional fuse to blow. And as we move forward to the future, so many of these ICs are very delicate. And so it's really important to make sure no overcurrent conditions meet. Plus, when a conventional fuse blows, someone has to go to the parts store and needs to make a repair. It's not a fun job. That's why we want to make it easier. So tell me a little bit about the unique features of Toshiba's E-fuses. Sure. So the E-fuse offers a plethora of features. The highest level ones that I've noticed are the most important are short circuit protection, overcurrent protection, overvoltage clamp, reverse current blocking, and we accomplish this with an external FET. So our E-fuse has an external FET pin, which actually is a gate driver for an external FET to allow for reverse current blocking. Inrush current protection, which is when you have adjustable slew rate control, and this is accomplished by placing a capacitor in the slew rate control pin. Has thermal shutdown, internationally standardized, so IEC 6236-8-1, which you'll be seeing appearing December 2020. And has a clamp type and an auto retry type. So these are all the main features in the E-Fuse. And if you could take a look at the graph on the right there, I have the two timing charts for the auto retry and a latch type. So if you notice on the auto retry type, What's happening is when you see an overcurrent event, it'll tell the system to shut down. And when that happens, the thermals jump up to 160 degrees Celsius, and it goes into this hysteresis mode. So essentially, it'll start cycling between down 20 degrees, 140 to 160, until operation is normal again. Okay. And with the latch type, it's waiting on you, the user, to actually latch it down and then latch it up again with the enable pin. So you can do that exactly how you'd like it, whether it's MCU controlled or if you just wanted to do it on its own, you can do that, no problem couple great options available for E-Fuse. Got it. So I have control. I don't have some protection device out there going rogue. Yep. So given all these cool features, tell me a little bit about some target applications. Absolutely. So for our E-Fuse, we're designing it first and foremost for power management and hot swapping applications. And you'll see these being most important in HDDs, SSDs, wireless charging and contact charging, mobile devices that operate in that 4.4 to 18 volt range, and then PMIC power path protection, as I'll show you later, and then wearables. So the application block diagram I'm showing today kind of shows you why E-Fuse is a perfect solution for protecting a PMIC and subsequent downline ICs. We have a 5 to 12 volt power input to the E-Fuse, and this power is going to go straight through to the PMIC. Whenever you have an overcurrent or an overvoltage condition, that could easily blow the PMIC, and that would destroy your design. So the E-Fuse is a great way to protect against that, And if you have an MCU internal as well, that can be used to control the E-Fuse. So it really just creates a sophisticated block to make sure that the rest of your circuit, whether it has DCDCs or LDOs or other very sensitive ICs, it's a great way to ensure they have no damage from overcurrent conditions. So I could almost think of it as adding protection to my PMIC. That's the goal. It should be very low maintenance, very low overhead, very easy to use. Got it. And these are also a lot of areas where the end user could make a lot of trouble for our device. Oh, yeah. Anytime the user can make something happen that you definitely didn't expect to the designer, Ephesus is a great way to counteract anything like a short circuit. So earlier you mentioned certifications. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what certifications you guys support and why they are important? Absolutely. So we've designed the E-Fuse to fill this IEC 62368-1 requirement. If you haven't heard of this before, it's a fusing requirement that covers electrical protection and audiovisual devices like consumer electronics, computing, networking products, displays, office appliances, most importantly, their power supplies. But as you can tell, it feels like just about everything. Okay. So this new requirement is going to be put into place December in 2020, and it's important to have hazard avoidance levels. So the E-Fuse allows the user to gain this certification much easier because it actually does act as a means of hazard avoidance. So this new certification is a great way and a good requirement that the user will have to meet by the end of this year. 
Okay, so we need to meet it by the end of this year, and it's already built in the E-Fuse today? Yep. So I wanted to clarify, there's a couple levels of IEC 6368-1. It's like on power supply level and also full device level. So maybe your power block in your design might need it, or your overall design might need it. So the E-Fuse allows you to get it in both areas easier, but it doesn't guarantee it on its own. So it'll help in getting the entire device certified, basically. Got it. Okay, so the E-Fuse is certified, and you can take advantage of that as a tool to help support getting the rest of your design certified. And there's one more as well, UL2367. You may have heard of it. It's a similar overcurrent standard, as most of these overcurrent devices are, and E-Fuse also makes getting this certification easier. Got it. Okay, now I know there are other circuit protection technologies out there, so tell me a little bit about the advantages eFuse brings compared with some of those other options. Sure. So we narrow this down to four main benefits. First and most important are the accuracy levels. So over current protection accuracy and over voltage protection accuracy. So when you're designing your circuit, you need to have margins, upper and lower bounds. And if your accuracy is really low, you're actually going to have to design it much more wide. So you're not going to have a very refined design. You might need to account for the worst, worst case scenarios. With eFuse, you can minimize that margin and make it much easier to design a more complete product. And not only that, it's ultra fast. So less than 200 nanoseconds for short circuit protection. The short circuit protection operates essentially when you have your current limit and your incoming current is 1.6 times the current limit. It goes into this short circuit mode, and it's ultra fast, less than 200 nanoseconds. It's also very low and adjustable with inrush current control, and this is through an external capacitor. But those are the four main areas where E-Fuse excels. Okay, wow. 200 nanoseconds. That's going to shut things down before anything bad can happen in my circuit. That's the goal. So I understand that Toshiba just came out with your first line of e-fuses. Can you give me a glimpse into what those look like? That's correct. We have just released our newest TCKE 800, 805, and 812 series e-fuses. The 805 covers 5 volt lines, 812 covers 12 volt lines. So this is important because the 805 is a clamp of 6 volts and the 12 has a clamp of 15 volts. So that's your basically your upper limit when it comes to power line supply. Got it. These e-fuses feature very important characteristics. So input voltage 4.4 to 18 volt and overcurrent protection of 0.5 amp to 5 amp. And that's with external resistance as well. So if your device is playing within this range, this is a great product designed in because it really does allow for the highest level of circuit protection. It's very fast, super low R on, which is important because normal polyfuses, for instance, when an overcurrent condition is met, the R on actually jumps drastically. And that's actually not that great for your design because you have to account for that, whereas the E-fuse Regardless if it's tripped or not, the Aron is low at 28 milliohms. Oh, okay. That's really helpful. And it also features adjustable slew rate control with external capacitance. So you might be able to see the DVDT pin, pin 1. If you place an external capacitor there, easy way to control slew rate. So the value of that capacitor is going to control my slew rate. Yep. So there's a couple adjustable things. As I mentioned, the overcurrent protection. So if you do an external resistor there, it allows for easy control, 0.5 amp to 5 amp, and that'll be when the trigger happens, depending on what you choose as the user. Okay. And then not only that, the short circuit protection is 1.6 times the I limit that you select. So when you select that, if the circuit sees 1.6 times that, it'll go into the fast trip mode, which will happen basically instantly. Okay, and that's to handle some big transients that may come along? Oh, yeah. Real short circuit conditions. So the E-Fuse features a 160 degree Celsius thermal shutdown limit. So when it goes into this loop, it'll hit 160 degrees C, uh, fall back 20 degrees, 240 degrees C, and then recheck. And it'll go into this loop until conditions are met, and then function resumes again. Okay, got it. And then what's the latch about? Sure, so we have two types, auto retry and latch type. So if you as the user want to make it easier on yourself, you can do auto retry type, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want some very fine control. Latch type allows the user to pull up and pull down the enable pin, and then resume based on that alone. So whatever you choose as the user, you can get with eFuse. Okay, cool. Now, we're all engineers here, so tell me a little bit about what's going on under the hood with these devices. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, the eFuse IC is not physical. It's a very complex circuit that Toshiba has designed and created with their own patents. So what's happening inside is essentially you have your VIN line. It's being checked constantly by an internal control circuit, basically checking repeatedly to see if there's an overvoltage over current condition. And when that condition is met, it'll cut off the external FET, discharge, pull to ground. And depending on what part you selected, it'll go into this auto retry loop where it'll go up to 160 degrees C and then fall back to 140. Check if operation's good, go back up. So it'll go into this loop until conditions are met. Or 
it'll go into the latched mode where it'll stay off until the user pulls down and then pulls up enable again. So for the most part, it's taking complete control over your power line circuit and making intelligent decisions based on what it sees. So when you say the user pulls it down again, you mean me, the design engineer, as the user with a microcontroller or something externally controlling it? Absolutely. So if you wanted to put an MCU, for instance, some sort of latch type, so maybe you have a current monitor, you can see that at the MCU and then make a decision there to pull down and pull up the EFUs again. But that being said, the auto retract kind of does that for you if you don't want to do that with an external part. Okay, so explain a little bit more about the external FET. And is that just allowing me to size for my particular design or what's the reason for the external FET? So to implement reverse current blocking within the actual part, it's a little difficult because of thermal issues. So what you can do is you can actually get an external FET and then it places it back to back with the internal FET allowing for reverse current blocking. So what we've done is we have actually pulled out the external FET pin to the edge of the component. So you can place your own FET, the FET of your choice, depending on your conditions, and you can run that in line with the V out line being controlled with the external FET. So in essence, it's a charge pump as well which is pretty cool. Okay, cool. So I'm ready to get started using these e-fuses. I'm going to click on that link and go to mauser.com. Is there anything else I should know about the various part numbers and so forth? I think I broke the 05 and 12 code for voltages a minute ago. Absolutely. So definitely all of our e-fuses are available on mauser.com. That's the greatest place to find all of our recent e-fuse products. And you can kind of see a breakdown of how these e-fuses play. So they're separated into 6 volt and 15 volt over voltage clamps. The overcurrent protection is adjustable, so external resistance, all of them do that. However, then you have to choose between auto retry and latched. So NA, auto retry, NL, latch type. So 800, 805, 812, all available online now. Got it. I think I can navigate that just fine. So tell me a little bit more about where I can go for more information. Absolutely. So you might have noticed Toshiba just did a revamp of our website. Uh, it's very sophisticated, very advanced now. So I wanted to show you real quick how you can access more information on eFuse and more of our IC products. So Toshiba does it all, but if you go to our website and you click the product drop down, you can see power management ICs. When you click that, you can see all of our ICs like LDO regulators, load switch ICs, and eFuse ICs and all the details and applications to follow. Great. That was really helpful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jake. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for having me. It was a great opportunity to work with you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about eFuses from Toshiba. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.